All right, so we're going to get we're going to get started in in the offense, and we're going to start off first by personnel. All right, so personnel groups. All right, um, whatever you know, if you're going to run this system, it's important that you you know you come up with how many personnel groupings is good for you. I like to be around four to five personnel groups, and also is you know what are your kids good at? What type of kids do you have? you know, plays a huge role in what personnel groups you, you get in. And we keep it simple. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't call it uh, 10 personnel or 21 personnel um, like most teams do. We give them names, okay? Um, I've, called, I've called them some of everything. You know, we, like, like for this system here that, you, that I'm sharing with you guys, we use animals at, as, as the personnel groupings. Um, I don't think the kids offensively don't understand traditional personnel terminology. If I looked at my kids right now and said, hey, we're going to get in 12 personnel, they, they don't have a clue what 12 personnel is. They don't know what 11 personnel is. And, you, and that's just something you have to teach. But if I say cheetah, they know immediately what personnel, who's supposed to be on the field, who's not supposed to be on the field uh, immediately. So that, that's the reason for giving um, personnel groups names. Um, so yeah, like I said, four, four to five is a magic number. I try to stay away from more than that, especially taking into a game. You get into where you've got six and seven personnel groupings, and uh, you know you, by the time you go through all your personnel groupings, it's the second half, and you may not have scored any points. So it's really built on the strength of your team. And, and you can use anything, like I said, as far as naming the personnel groupings. So right here um, is our personnel groupings. Cheetah is, and I put on here, you know, 10 personnel, 20 personnel, all that. But cheetah, dog, tiger, hippo, rhino, and bear. You know, and um, when you're calling the plays, I just scream out, hey, dog, dog, dog. The kids that are in dog personnel run onto the field. All right. And, and, you know, if I yell cheetah, the, the, the kids run off the field or run on the field. Who's supposed to be in cheetah? Um, and, I, and I know a lot of defensive coordinators go, well, you know, do you, do you take people off the field to, to personnel? Then I can sub as a defense and I know that you've got this set of plays, you know, in these personnel groupings. I know that. And I'm fine with that. In high school, I believe that you have to change personnel. You know, if, if we do have a tight end kid that can step off and play you back or go out and wide receiver, that's great. But again, we, we, we're, not, we're not a college. We can't recruit a kid that can do that. Um, and very rarely do you find high school kids that can, that can play tight end, play fullback, play wide receiver, and you never have to change personnel. So I believe, I'm a big believer in go ahead and change personnel. And then you as a coach, you have to do a good job of making sure you protect your plays in that personnel grouping and you run multiple plays uh, out of these personnel groupings. You know, I go through and each, in the, each position has a specific um, name. Like, uh, you know, Q's quarterback, T's the running back, Y is a traditional tight end on, and an on the ball receiver or an on the ball receiver. All right, so the Y in our um, tight end set is, is a tight end guy. He knows that's Y. And when we get into the formations, you'll, you'll understand a little more. And then the Y is also the on the ball receiver. The Z is, the, is an off the ball receiver. The H is an off the ball receiver. X is, you know, backside or, you know, on the ball receiver. F for fullback. And then we use a U back, a uh, utility player is what it is. And he's a type, tight end type kid that can play wing and, and, and block and, and get out in routes and things like that. So that's kind of how we name our person, uh, players within our personnel groupings. All right. So. I'm going to show on here each personnel grouping. Um, so, so the first one we have up is Cheetah. It's our traditional spread two by two set, okay, and, and 10 personnel. Um, so, you know, we just yell Cheetah, 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 and the kids that are in Cheetah run onto the field. You can also do uh, boards where you hold up 
signs, you know, with a, maybe a cheetah on it, or, or you can get creative how you want to do it. But typically I've found that um, just, just screaming out the personnel grouping, the kids know to run onto the field. They're all, they're all right there behind me. Um, I say it into the headset, and then it gets echoed by the other coaches. Um, then, then we have dog. And what dog is, is a traditional, you know, three receiver set with a fullback. And this fullback is a traditional fullback. Um, he doesn't get in a three point stance. Uh, he is in a two point stance, but he is a traditional fullback. He's going to kick out on power. He's going to lead on an ISO. He's going to wrap on a counter. Um, but we do like for it to be a type of guy that can get out in the flats on a flood or something like that. Tiger, all right, is basically the same personnel as Dog, but we change, take the F off the field, and then our utility player comes onto the field. Uh, and like I said, he's more of a tight end type guy, he plays in a wing set, um, a longer kid that can go out for routes and, and um, block the alley uh, as needed, but it's, it's, he's more of a tight end type player rather than you know, a fullback. Then we have hippo, which for us hippo is when the tight end is on the ball. Okay, so the Y is a is a true tight end, your traditional tight end player. Sometimes, some years we've had it to where the the utility player was our on the ball tight end. Um, so he just knew to stay on the field when we switched to this personnel grouping. Rhino. And there we go with our true pros formation, all right, a tight end and a fullback in the game. And then Bear. Bear is a double fullback, three-back type set, all right? And now I have used in the past where we've go, gone with another T in the backfield, all right, and just one F. Um, so... You know, you can make these personnel groupings anything you want to make them to fit your your personnel. Um, and I'm going to show some of the film on here, some two back type stuff. You know, and and you just give it a name. You know, that's 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 a that's another animal. So so you want to really do a good job when you're putting these personnel groupings of making it simple for the kids. And, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing, too, is keeping it around four to five personnel groupings. All right, formations and alignments. All right, so we did our we did our personnel groupings. All right, the animals we had those those uh, kids running on and off the field. Well, how do we get them aligned? You know, and um, for years when when I first started this no huddle thing, um, you know, I was just like every other coach in the country that just fell in love with what Oregon and Gus Malzahn was doing at Auburn when he was an OC there, and just really fell in love of the tempo and the playing fast. I always thought I'm not going to move my receivers around. All right, I'm I'm, I'm going to keep them in one spot so we can play faster. Well, uh, through all the years um, that we've had success in this system, a lot of it's been the ability to move our receivers anywhere we want to move them in a simple way in every personnel grouping. All right, so these formations and alignments that I'm going to show you, you can almost be limitless and how you align your receivers. Um, if you've got a really good X receiver, you don't want him just playing on the left side all night long. You want to move him around, right? And he's on the ball receiver, you can't put him in motion. So you got to get creative. Um, and that's what we've done here. We, we, we really try our best to try to get our guys anywhere we want to get them on the field. Um, so formations, have the, have the ability to be multiple. Um, be able to move receivers around, and simple hand signals. We use hand signals to signal in our formations. Um, and, and, and we try to stay consistent. And by that I mean is if we're right, lining up in right or left, you know, that's right, that's left, and we don't veer away from it, you know, in each personnel grouping. So it'll make more sense when I get into it. Um, 
you know, and, and like I said, be multiple, don't get crazy with it. You know, you start lining up in all these weird formations. It's okay, and you may get catch a defensive coordinator, um, but you can't do that consistently in a game. And for me, you know, it takes more time to practice that stuff. You should be practicing your, your base stuff and getting better at it. Because I think that if you execute uh, your base stuff and you're really good at your base stuff, just like the Bruce Lee quote, um, you can, uh, you know, flawless execution. It doesn't matter that you know, they know what you're running. Um, so we don't get crazy with our formations. Uh, customize your formations based on your players' ta talents, game plans, and strength of your offense. You know, we really want to base everything we do off our players' talent. All right, so uh, here's our personnel, formations, alignments, examples. All right, so in Cheetah, all right, in Cheetah, um, that's the that's the you know the ten personnel, um, you know, uh, offense. So when we yell Cheetah, 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 the the four receivers run on the field. All right, and they're echoing it too. That way, if we're in Tiger or something like that, the kids on the field know what personnel and they run off. All right, we have R and L, trips right, trips left, um, right flip, at left flip, trips right flip, trips left flip, uh, and then R switch, L switch. You know, and it, it, it's simple hand signals. It sounds, you know, when you look at it like that, you go, man, that's, that's a lot. It's really not. Um, the flip, the, the, the switch, those type of things are typically you're going to use when you're game planning. You want to get your, you know, you want to get your X receiver with your, with your Z receiver. So, so you can just call switch or, or, or flip. Um, so let's look at, and, and you can add things like tight, you know, we'll, we'll twist our hand like this, you know, we'll go cheetah, um, we'll go right tight, all right, and that, that'll tell them to condense their formation, um, bunch, you know, wing. You can add all of this stuff um, once you get down to your base stuff. So here, here's, some, here's some examples of cheetah. So this is, this is cheetah right or R, whatever you want to say. Um, and the cool thing about it is uh, the kids know, hey, I lift my right arm up. They know to line up on the right. This is what you got to understand, though. In the Y and the Z travel together, okay, in all of our personnel groupings. So if I say R, the Y and the Z know they're to the right. The X and the H, they know they're to the left. All right, so, so I, don't have to, I don't have to say anything else to get these guys lined up. All right, so I just say right. So this, this is cheetah and right. And then you have left. The Y, as you see, the Y and the Z go to the left. The H and the X are, are, are opposite. Now, the back aligns to whatever the play call is or the protection. So then we have trips. So we go trips right, all right? And, and again, the Y and the Z travel together, all right, with R. Trips tells the H he's coming over, and he's the number three receivers on the call side. Then you have trips left. You know, the X is by himself over here, and the trips are to the, to the left. Then we have cheetah right, so that tells the Y and the Z, they're to the right. The H and the X, they're away, all right? And then we just say flip. You know, we do it like, like we're flipping a coin, you know, right flip. And that just tells the Z that he's number two receiver and the Y's outside receiver now. So now we've created a whole nother formation just by a simple hand signal, all right? And, and we're very multiple in that. And then you go left, flip. And, and that tells the, tells the Z he, he's right here. Now we could go trips, flip, and, and that would tell the H over here. Now your Y's the number one receiver, your Z's the number two, and the H is number three. So again, you can be as multiple as you want to be. Here's an example of that. You know, if you want to say, say that you've got a, like, like we've, we've got a really good wide receiver. Sometimes we want him number one on trip side. Um, so uh, sometimes we'll line up in this to, to, to get this look. Matchups. All right, and there's trips left flip. All right, and here's switch. Okay, and what switch is, switch tells the X receiver 
that he's the number two receiver on this side. So we go R, which is no different for the Y and the Z. They line up on the right, all right? And we just say switch, like we're flipping a light switch. That simple hand signal tells the X he's the on-ball receiver, but he's going to be the number two receiver right here. All right, so, so that's the only difference in switch. But again, the R tells these two guys that, that they're traveling together. So that's a, you know, it gives us a, you know, a, the ability to be multiple. Here it is too. Okay, and then when I said earlier about being consistent in your personnel and your formation names, you're about to see it right here. So this is, this is our dog, dog personnel. So R, well, what, what did the receivers do in Cheetah on R? They line up the Y and the Z, go to the call side. Same thing here. So we just simply go R, and the Y and the Z, they know to line up on the right. X is away, and the fullback aligns away from the call, okay? So we can go R, and he lines up away from the call. He's on the left side of the, left side of the formation. If we go L, he lines up on the right side of the formation, and the Y and Z travel together. Now, I know it's not true trips, and, and I get a lot of criticism for this, because it's not, it's, it's not trips. But to make it simple for our kids, we call this trips in dog. And all that does is tell the fullback he's to the trip side, he's to the right. So if he see, sees a signal for the trip's right, he lines up to the right, okay? And, and we're very multiple, and we don't have to, to use any added words. We just go trips right, trips left. And then we get into the whole flip and the switch and the, you know, all that type of stuff that we did with the other personnel groupings. Tiger, okay, and that's the U back. It's just like dog. The U back goes away from the away from the um, call. Tiger ill, and then you can go tiger trips right. All right, and it, it's it. You know that's some could argue that's more of a trips look than than the last one. But you know you got your U back on the same side with your Y and your Z. Hippo, which you know this one has a few difference differences because it's a true tight end set. All right, so he, you know, same rules. The Y and Z travel to the call, right? So those two guys go to the right, and the H and the X go away, just like they're doing Cheetah. So, so it's very consistent. Um, the only difference is, you know, in, in here, trips right, the H obviously can't be inside the Y, but, it, you know, we get a tray formation here by going trips right. Trips left. And then this is the one where we go R, okay? Y travels to the call, right? Just like everything else. And we go over. So if we're R over, the Z knows that he's over. So now we get a closed formation with trips to the, you know, if you want to go trips to the field with a, with a nub tight end, there you go. You just R over, you know, and then we simply just R and then we go over there, over. You know, you play really fast, and, 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 it, and, and it gives you something formationally uh, to attack the defense with. So just I think the, the most important thing with formations, all right, don't get crazy with it, and be consistent with the kids and how you signal it, and, and switch it up. You know, if, you're, if you spend a lot of time one game and, and trips right, then maybe the next week throw in some trips right flip, you know, and things like that. So you do some self-scouting and, and, and being, I think being multiple is, is really the key there.